Okay, so um, I was debating if I wanted to teach this or not, but I decided to do it for two reasons. One, you only know how to solve one type of diffie Q right now, okay? And that's probably not enough types. And second, it's good for you to see that differential equations are solved using different methods for different styles of problems. So there's kind of two reasons why I want to teach this. This is the kind of problem you guys know how to solve right now. Here's what you know how to solve. If I give you a problem like this, dy dx <coughs> equals 5x squared e to the y, you guys know how to solve this. You basically put the e to the y on the bottom here, and you put the dx on the right side. So 5x squared dx. So we say separate, right? And then we integrate, integrate both sides like this. Then we anti-differentiate. Remember, you only need the plus C on one side. And then you isolate. So these are the, all, the only kind of problem you even know how to solve. And eventually, you can get it down to a single answer. Uh, let's see if I can do it here. So let's multiply by negative 1. I am not going to put negative c, uh, because remember, c is any number I wish. So if I multiply by negative 1, it's still any number I wish. All right? OK, and then I'm going to ln both sides. That's to get rid of the e. That's a 5 thirds times x cubed. And then we negate. So basically, you put negative ln and then negative 5 thirds x cubed plus c. And this is called a general solution. to the Diffie Q. Now, do you remember the original problem? Uh, it was dy dx equals, right? And it was 5x squared e to the y. Do you know what happens when you take the derivative of this answer we got and put it right here? And then we take this answer and put it right here for y. You get 5x squared e to the blah equals 5x squared e to the blah. In other words, <coughs> this function is unique because it matches this equation perfectly. Okay? You can test that, actually, by taking the derivative of your answer and putting that on the left, and then just substituting in your answer for this y right here, and you'll see two equal expressions. And that's very rewarding. But we can only solve this problem because of the way it was written. Okay? Oh, yeah, if you want to check your answer, um, it's kind of a lot of work. But you would do something like this. You take your answer and you substitute it into the original Diffie Q. So you'd go ahead and put that whole thing right here. And the left side would be d dx of that answer. And if you, if you kind of work this out, you see two equal sides. They look exactly the same. That's when you know you did it right. You created a function whose derivative is the same thing as multiplying 5x squared times e to that function. OK, separating is it's actually not that hard to learn. You guys did it. You tested on it. It was on the AP test. And it's the only kind of 50Q on the whole AP test, even the ABBC thing. There's only one time. How, do we, how are we supposed to do it if it was like plus one? How exactly. Like, That's what we're going to learn right now. So we didn't know it? We never knew it. Approximate. We can approximate those sorts of things using Euler's method, stuff like that, but we can't solve them. So here's, here's what I'm saying. You can only solve a problem if it looks like this. Y prime's on the left, and then there might be a number there, and then there's an f of x, and then there's a g of y, and that's it. 
you can solve these kind quite well, I'm sure. So I could give you another 10 examples of what we just did. Uh, let's go ahead and write that like that. Okay, so this kind we could do. But what do you do with a problem like this one? dy dx equals kf of x plus g of y. What if there's a plus here? What next? How would you solve it? Well, this is a totally different problem. Okay? It's not separable. Let me show you an example. Let's say I gave you this problem. Uh, let's say it was dy dx equals e to the x, not times y, but minus y. If this was a times y, this problem would be separable. We'd be done in five minutes. But that darn minus sign makes it not separable. You might say, I can still do it. Watch this. I'll bring the y to the left and the dx to the right. Uh, okay. You mean you're going to add the y over? And multiply by dx? Is that what you're planning to do? How about we multiply by dx first? Uh, let's see. Let's pursue your little plan here. Uh, how are you planning to get the y to the left side? OK. This is just not going to work. And the reason is this is a different kind of problem entirely. This is called a first order linear differential equation, or a fold EQ. First order linear differential equation. I'm not going to explain what that means. I'm just going to tell you that it's called a full, a first order linear. You don't need the vocab right now. You need the skills. Okay? So forget the vocab. How do you solve this problem? Well, first of all, you want to bring everything to one side like this. Anything that has a y. Okay? But go ahead and leave the dy dx there. In fact, for simplicity's sake, why don't we just write it as y prime? Okay, now here's the critical thinking part, okay? We have seen problems before in Calc 1, okay? We've seen plenty <coughs> of problems where we have y prime and y added together. We've seen them before. Implicit. It happens on implicit. It happens every time you do a product rule, right? Watch this. Watch this carefully. What is the derivative of a, b if a and b are functions? What's the derivative of AB? A prime B plus B. A prime B plus what? B prime, B prime A. Look closely. In this, you can see there's an A prime and an A being added. Right? That's kind of what I have here. What's missing is sort of the B. You see. Okay, so I'm, the first time I do this, it's going to look like magic. But then I think you're going to figure out what I'm doing. I'm going to multiply both sides of this equation by e to the x. Okay? I'm not going to tell you how I knew that. Um, you're going to figure that out. This is my problem. I'm a little stuck. Uh, what function can I take the derivative of and then add the original function and get e to the x? I don't know, but I'm going to try something and see if you can figure out how I figured this out. I'm going to multiply by e to the x right here. Let's see what it looks like now. Now it looks like e to the x y prime plus y e to the x equals e to the 2x. And this left side now looks to me like an a b prime plus a prime b. I turned it into a product rule. That left side is the derivative of e to the x times y. This is d dx of e to the x times y. Let's convince ourselves real quick. What's the derivative of e to the x times y? Uh, first function times e to the second, y plus second function times e to the first. Plus e to the x. I said that wrong, but yeah. So e to the x times y prime plus y times e to the x. <coughs> it's very clever. I multiplied by a magic something. It's kind of like completing the square. You add the magic number to make it perfectly factorable. Here, I multiplied by the magic factor that makes this integrable. 
I can integrate that. Integrable. So I'm multiplying by the magic something that turns the left side into ddx of a product. And now I'm just going to integrate both sides. Okay, so integrating both sides, put an integral dx on each side. Looks like this. The dx cancels out here. The integral of d of anything is just that same anything. Uh, the right side is going to be 1 half e to the 2x plus c, where c is any number we wish. I'm very close to done. Now I'm going to divide by e to the x. Or you could say multiply both sides by e to the negative x. And this is my general solution. We're not going to do particular solutions today, you know, where you plug in an initial condition. Let's just stop here on each problem today. Okay, so I'm going to zoom out a little bit so you can see all my work. I started with a problem that looked brand new. I multiplied by what's called an integrating factor. It's the magic something that makes the left side a perfect derivative. Just like completing the square, you add a magic something to make a perfect square. I then integrate both sides, done. Very cool. So here's the question. How did I know to use dx? I'm still not going to answer that question. I'm going to do another example, and this time when I multiply by the green, see if you can figure out where I got it from. Okay? Let's go to the next problem. Our second example is x y prime minus 3 y equals x cubed. I don't like how this one looks a little different from last time. There's an x out front that wasn't there in the last problem. Look back at example one. I did not have an x at the very beginning. See that? I did not have an x right here on the last problem. I think we should just go ahead and divide by x real quick so we can see this problem just like the last problem. So I'm going to divide by x just real quick like this. I have this problem now. I had said that I think the left side could be turned into a product rule type thing. I'm going to multiply again by a magic something. See if you can figure out where I got it this time. Watch very closely. Last time, what did I multiply by? Do you remember? E to the x. It's going to always be e to the something. Okay? Here it is. We're going to multiply by e to the, drum roll, negative 3 ln x. Does anyone know where I got the negative 3 from? Does anyone know where I got the ln absolute value x from? Whatever is in front of the y, integrate it and put it up on an e. That's the magic something. I'll say that again. Whatever is sitting here is normally called p of x. And this guy, this magic integrating factor is always e to the integral of p of x. I should probably use a dummy variable, but the, the point is, it's not very hard to figure out what to multiply by. Just anti-derive whatever's in front of your y, stick it on an e, that's the magic something. The rest is easy, actually, and this big green guy is called an integrating factor. That's a great name for him. This is brand new right here. This is called an integrating factor. Integrating factor. Let me label that. Some people have fancy names for it, like mu of x. 
I don't care what you call it. You can call it uh, S of X for Sydney or A of X for RN, whatever you want. Okay? We don't really care what it's called, but most textbooks call it mu of X. Okay, uh, let's finish this problem. This now looks like this. Oh, by the way, I think there's a better way to write e to the negative 3 ln x, don't you? I mean, it's kind of, a, kind of redundant to write e to the negative ln 3 ln x. Why don't we move the negative 3 like this? And then the, doesn't the e and the ln just cancel out? Okay. And just for simplicity's sake, let's just make sure that x is positive in this problem to begin with. I actually forgot to write that in the beginning. So we won't even need the absolute value. This is going to be our integrating factor, x to the minus 3. So, I mean, before I distribute something, don't you think I should clean it up a little? Okay, so we will be multiplying by x to the minus 3. That's a simpler way to write that. Oh, well, let's see what it looks like. So it's going to be x to the minus 3y prime minus, and then it's going to be 3x to the minus 4y equals x to the minus 1. I just distributed. I guess this might be a little hard for some people. Just looking at the left side, I assure you, this is d d x of something. So you guys are really good with product rule. I'm sure you can see what is being differentiated. X to the minus 3y. X to the minus 3y is what's being differentiated here. <coughs> the derivative of x to the minus 3y is x to the minus 3y prime minus 3 x to the minus 4y. Matches perfectly. And now we can integrate both sides, get rid of the ddx. Okay, um, so it takes a little bit of practice to see this, but because we multiply by the green integrating factor, we know for a fact that this is the derivative of some product. It's got to be something times something's derivative. Okay, and that something is right here and right here. This represents a, b prime plus uh, a prime b, you know. So the a and the b must be x to the minus 3 and y. Can you kind of see that? It takes a little practice to get it, but it's always, you know what it is? You know what that is? That's your integrating factor. See? And the y, well, that's always the so it takes a minute for you to realize this is the product rule for something, and it's basically uh, x to the minus 3y. I'm positive you're going to get that, Hunter, because it's just a matter of staring at it for a minute and deciding what a and b were. OK, well, anyway, this cancels out the dx. What's the integral of d anything? That same. that same thing, right. So this is just x to the minus 3y. This side's done. Uh, the right side, we've got to figure this out. What's the antiderivative of 1 over x? Ln x. Ln absolute value x, right? We already said x was positive. Let's go ahead and copy that rule down here. We should always include our domains and our answers. And so if we're going to finally answer this, oh, don't forget the plus c. I almost forgot. Big fat plus c. I usually just do the right side. Uh, multiply both sides by x cubed to get a nice, clean final answer. There you go. So the first time I just magically multiplied by e to the something, right? You didn't know why. This time I think you kind of caught on how I got that integrating factor. This time you're going to try it, OK? This is our last example for today. And your worksheet has your, this worksheet, which is due on uh, Tuesday, is going to have some problems like these, OK? So here it is. It's dy dx minus y tan x equals 5. And 
I need to keep my x between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. I'll explain why later, but normally these are just givens anyway. It's because tangent has asymptotes all over the place. So that says negative pi over 2 is less than x is less than pi over 2. Okay, so if you write it as y prime minus tan xy, you can see it really is a fold EQ, first order linear equation, differential equation. Fold EQs always look exactly the same. Listen, you've got a y prime. It's all alone. Then you've got a plus something or minus something. Then you've got garbage times y. And then this is always equal to garbage. And there's no y on the right. They always look exactly the same. Y prime, garbage y, garbage no y. They always look like this. Okay? See if you can figure out what the magic something is that I'm going to multiply by to make the left side integrable as a product. kind of a tougher one. So the magic something is e to the integral of negative tan. Or the antiderivative. This is going to take a minute to figure out this green thing. And I really should use a dummy variable, but I'm too lazy. I should use tan t dt. Should use some plug in. Uh, yeah, definitely clean it up. Anything you're going to distribute, you want to clean it up first. Yeah, for sure. Is it negative Oh, let's see here. So if you write this as sine x over cos x, and you do a u sub, are you letting u equal cos x? I didn't, I didn't take the negative. I just made u equal negative cos x. And then oh, that works too. The way I'm doing it, it's going to be du is negative sine x dx. So I'll put the negative on my du. So this is e to the negative integral negative du over u. In other words, e to the integral, 1 over u du, where u is cosine. So this just comes out to be e to the integral, I'm sorry, e to the ln, I mean, e to the ln absolute value cosine x. So, okay. And since so we're... Yeah, it, because I also chose, look at the x's I'm choosing. The x's I'm choosing are all too close to the origin, where cosine is entirely above the axis. So we do not need absolute values. The e and the ln cancel out. What is my magic something? It's just cosine x. So that was a little cryptic, but that's the magic something. Most of that was just calc 1 right there. So we had y prime minus tan xy equals 5. We're multiplying by a magic something. It turns out that magic something is cos x. OK, go ahead and see if you can finish the problem. You're distributing now. Don't forget, tangent x times cosine x does simplify. Doesn't it? Right. So distributing, we get cos x times y prime minus sine x times y equals 5 cos x. And that left side, I promise you, is the derivative of something times something. Always. Do you see it, Brian? Okay. 
what two functions multiply when you take the derivative, you get a cosine and a sine and a y prime and a y. So let me label it this way, Brian, so you can see it better. This represents a and b prime and a prime and b, you see. Can you tell me what a and b are? Yes, cos x times y. The derivative of that, and you should check. You should double check. I'm pretty sure this is right. If you take the derivative of cos x times y, it does recover cos x y prime minus sine x y. I think we're good. Now we integrate both sides. We've kind of learned our lesson. The left side is going to become cos x times y. Let's not get carried away here. The left side is cos x times y. The right side, you're anti-deriving. this. Okay, so the right side is 5 sine x. Don't forget the fat plus c. Very important. Does it have to be fat? Fat. There has to be like a different one than the other one? No, I'm sorry. Okay. I shouldn't have said fat. I was just saying, don't forget to write it. And I, I always draw it really big because every time you write this, it should be a reminder that I'm going to do it again next time. It's really important on a differential equation because... There are many answers in a general solution. There's infinite number of functions that obey the rules that you've been given. Yeah, so now it's time to divide by cosine. So if I divide by cosine, let's go back to black here. If I divide by cosine, you get, what's probably the best way to write this? Five. 10x plus c seek x. Okay, now I don't do this very often, but it is a very feel-good kind of thing. It would feel really good if we plug this back into the original problem and it worked. And I think we could all use a dose of positive emotions right about now. So, let's see if this is really true. The, the function was, or the diffie q was, dy dx minus y tan x equals 5. We're going to check real quick. If you have time on a test, always check your general solution. Okay, what would uh, dy dx be if this is our general solution? What would dy dx be? You're doing your head. You guys are so good at this stuff. 5 seek squared x plus uh, 5 squared x tan x. Uh, c times c x. seek x tan x. Good. Minus y tan x equals 5. y tan x equals 5. This gives me 5 sec squared x minus 5 tan squared x equals 5. Notice that the c sec x and the negative c sec x, I'm sorry, the c sec x tan x, and the negative c x tan x cancels out. We're very close. I hope secant squared minus tangent squared is 1. It is. Pull out a 5. You get sec squared minus tan squared. This is 5 times 1 equals 5. This is kind of worth your time in the end of a problem, you know. So that's the lesson for today. I do have one closing comment, and then... Uh, I'll let you ask questions. Yeah, yeah, question? Let me record it. Okay, we're not going to do any more examples. We're not going to learn anything new. But it turns out that this is important because although a lot of things in the real world, when you're studying physics or whatever, a lot of the differential equations really are separable. We saw that with temperature, logistic growth. All those guys are separable differential equations. So I understand why the college board only tested you on separable diffie Qs. It's because real life has a lot of separable diffie Qs. But if you're like a skydiver and you're falling through the air, your velocity and your position, or I should say actually, your acceleration and your velocity both play a role in your motion and in the drag forces on your body. You know that when you reach terminal velocity, you stop speeding up. Everybody knows that. You hit 120 miles an hour, you no longer speed up, right? 
That, that, what that means is the drag forces on your body are related somehow to your velocity and your acceleration. So force is MA plus BV. There's actually a velocity term in your force, and that's a concern. It means that your difficulties are complex and difficult to solve, and way beyond us, even after this lesson. But there are different kinds of difficulties in nature, and they often come with friction and that sort of thing. Okay? Most of them have to be solved with a computer anyway. So this is just a, a taste of how a problem could be a little different, but still have a clever solution. Bernoulli said he could turn a problem like this one into a foldy cube. Watch this problem. This is what we're going to do tomorrow. Bernoulli said he could take this problem here, uh, y prime minus 1 over 2xy equals xy squared. This, see, this is not a fold. This is not a fold EQ. And the reason is, you've got your y prime, you've got your garbage y, but you've got equals garbage with my y's. Bernoulli found a very clever way to rewrite this problem so it doesn't have this y squared here. And he did not corrupt the left side. It's very interesting how he did it. He was able to remove this y squared without corrupting the left side. And he turned it into a fold EQ and solved it. And I'll show you how to do it tomorrow. It's actually extremely clever. One simple substitution will change this to a fold EQ, and then we can actually attack it using our little uh, integrating factor. OK, so that'll be cool. That'll double the number of problems we know how to do. Even if there is something here with y, we can still solve. So that's just a kind of a teaser you know, to get you excited about tomorrow's lesson.